like the background on that is that, you know, I was interested in VR since I was very young in the 90s. And I had my first really? VR company in 97 when it wasn't really happening yet. Um, I'm, dating, I'm dating myself. And then um, it was uh, it was just too early for that to really have cultural importance, let's say. But by 2006, I showed the last piece in a museum in Korea. Um, and I was kind of fed up with it. And I went like back to painting traditional media. But then around 2014, I, I met the founder, of this, the, the inventor of this technology, Balaj Frago, um, who was coming over from Budapest. And um, I took a look at it and we scanned my solo show at, at Equity and I thought, yeah, this is fantastic. And, and this has a lot of potential future. He just needed to kind of get through the code and refine it. And so he spent a couple of years doing that. And then we started building the company in New York together. Um, and, and since then we've doubled the company twice this year. Uh, so we're like 45 people now. And the, uh, but the, but art historically, I would say like when the market kind of tipped in 2008, 2009, a lot of artists were kind of scratching their head and they're like, what is the discourse? What is the meaning? Like we understand the market and we understand that like things, you know, go in waves and there's a big peak and there's a, 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 fur, a fury and a, and a fervor for investing in art. And then that becomes the dominant conversation. And then when that crashes, then people get to get to you know look at the pieces and 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 kind of do a deeper analysis, and hopefully like the work gets more interesting again. So like our our like approach at that time was to create um, and like a more underground space and a and a charity based around supporting underground spaces called CollectiveShow.org. We did shows in New York, LA, and Mexico City, and we were trying to do stuff in Detroit and Berlin, and then basically things shifted again, and we. We kind of went digital basically um figuring that we could help more people um tactically it was like difficult to travel and and organize and um and so when i uh started working on the walter's cube project as a co-founder I, I kind of put that same energy that i did for the community project into into this project uh because i knew that the company would need like access to the art world and also you know that the type of the same type of ethos that we brought to Silver Shed and Collective Show, that we you know want to make sure that we're doing things in a kind of balanced way, and we're getting um, a, a broad a broadcast uh, across the market. Um, I mean, some of the bills are being paid by Blue Chip, but we're also trying to make sure that we're going to be uh, in a position to help institutions um, get back on their feet after COVID by being able to keep continuing the projects. And basically, the the, the fundamental thing about the, the thing is that is that Walter's Cube uh, helps archive existing shows, but onlineviewingroom.com allows people to take those shows um, uh, or scan an empty space or even take a space and then empty it and then have an uploader to, to do new shows in that space and basically continue their programs as they would have if they you know, could get back into the building, which, which should save a lot of jobs because people can continue their work more or less digitally and um, critics can review those shows and still write their articles and publish them online. And just that all our activities have, have gone online in the last few months and 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 there is definitely a fatigue to that but it, there's also a fatigue and of, of people who work their whole life and then all of a sudden can't produce what they produce or they don't have a means of income anymore and most of our world was is either well cushioned or very precarious let's face it it's, it's kind of split in half or maybe the teaching environment feels a little bit more steady because there's um uh, what do you call it a tenure but it, the the battle towards tenure is apparently so you know rigorous that i mean it scared me out of academia so um i thought i can do more on the community front and so that's what we're trying to do here um uh it's um it's a little more difficult because a startup is quite like a, an intense environment but i think uh I, I think as artists like we should we should be taking on sort of uh existing cultural frameworks and kind of problematizing them or kind of aping them or kind of you know taking the piss out of it uh so for me to do a tech startup it kind of felt like that too like you know we're gonna we're gonna kind of artify this this project and we're gonna create um a platform here um i used to work at eflux which was you know still a platform that i love um so i wanted to bring some of that knowledge to this and um that's another you know, like you know point of reference in the, in the discourse, but we're we're hoping that we can basically continue the conversations and hold new conversations, especially for digital it. art, 
because digital artists got so, such short shrift in the quote unquote like proper art forum magazine art basel world you know there's like three people that people can name sometimes off the top of their head and they scratch their head a little bit harder they'll remember another three people and they're probably mostly guys um and and even if i when i'm running through names myself i would <laughs> i would make sure that i wrote that list down first because i wouldn't want to forget anybody but when you think about how pro like pr and the art works in, in general it's about repetition like we get used to people's names we remember people's faces we're told this is important and it's reinforced and that that is advertising and so if we face the facts that like the things that we know and love are the things that are familiar and that we're actually not really that hardwired to novelty we realize that what an uphill battle we have as creatives and that we really must support each other in a holistic way understanding that we're facing a challenge that if we want to affect change in the status quo we're waging an uphill battle and that's going to require new tactics new technologies and, and new alliances 